Entre las cosas que nos dejan Among the things that the so-called Arab Spring that erupted in 2011 in the world is the war in Yemen. A raise forced the then president uh, to leave power in the hands of his vice president, who had to confront uh, matters like corruption, food insecurity, many military being loyal to Saleh, and a separatist movement to the south. So the transition was not easy. It created deception and uh, deceit in many Yemenis that decided to uh, support the Houthis. In 2015, they took over Sana'a. They forced Saudi to leave to Saudi Arabia. The Saudi monarchy, fearful that uh, uh, a new uh, movement in Iran um, started bombarding the country, creating, according to the United Nations, the worst humanitarian disaster of these times. Yemen, a long-term war. War. This is a critical move today. We will watch at actors, events, and you. Having seen the origins in, in our editorial, in mid-December 2018, the uh, Yemeni armed forces and Houthis uh, approved a ceasefire in the opening uh, the doors to food. After conversations that were held in Sweden with other uh, uh, viewers, this has not been observed. Children continue dying, according to UNICEF. This uh, Sunday, a new bomber, deadly bombarding uh, took place in the, uh, near the capital in Salah, uh, near a school. It, according to the last figures, that left uh, 13 people dead, including seven students and 100 uh, wounded people. These are terrible lesions and dead people. The protection of peoples and infrastructure is a principle of international humanitarian law that must be guaranteed. This is what the coordinator of the United Nations for uh, Humanitarian Matters said. On March 26, the people were celebrating four years of resistance after the Saudi uh, resistance, and these kind of testimonies were heard. This is a message to the world. This people is ready to maintain resistance, stability, sacrifice, and donations for the dignity and sovereignty of this beautiful nation. We will never be back under Saudi or U.S. Uh, tutelage. We say that uh, we are like the mountains, and mountains do not fall. We will struggle year after year, 10, 100 years until we resurrect. We are now in the fifth year of the brutal aggression we are firm. We cry the enemies of God and their messengers. You traitors to the United States and Israel are not wanted here in the un Yemeni land. On last uh, April 4th, U.S. Congress passed a resolution that urged the Donald Trump's administration to decree the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Yemen in the next 30 days after the approval of this resolution. If we go a little before in time, we find that on March 13, the Senate, ratified by the House of Representatives, had uh, authorized a resolution Solution that also asked the executive to end the logistic and weapon support to the war of Yemen. So this is a fact in the eyes of Congress. What we are seeing now in Yemen is a humanitarian disaster. 85,000 children have died due to severe malnutrition resulting from the war conducted by Saudi Arabia. If we don't act in a decisive way to support their economy and provide humanitarian law, the situation could be worse. This was Senator Bernie Sanders because it was him, one of the proponents of this resolution that was passed uh, on April 4. Let's look at Yemen on the map between Asia and uh, map, for which the concept of humanitarian crisis does apply. Republic of Yemen, continental country located in Near East 
and it is uh, located in the Mashrek, south of the Arabian Republic, surrounded by the Arabian Sea, the Red Sea. It is the largest country of the Arabian uh, Peninsula. It is one of the most ancient centers of the civilization of the Middle East. Its capital and most populated city is Sana, with uh, a little over 25,000 square kilometer of extension. It has uh, petroleum deposits which generate 25% of its GDP and 63% of state income. The current republic uh, was created in 1990 between uh, and was called the Democratic Republic of uh, Yemen or South Yemen. It was born in 2018 after the partition of the Ottoman uh, Empire and uh, uh, Saudi Arabia as the leader of an international coalition began criminal military actions against Yemen on March 25, 2015. A report from the Washington Post reveals that since the first bombing, 50,000 people have been killed. 3,000 of them were children. 3,000 of them. 60,000 dead people in all. More than half of the population, according to the United States, 14 million people, are in conditions prior to hunger and need external aid to survive. The massive risk of dying of hunger in this uh, country degraded by war and external interference uh, is suffering the worst crisis of the world. United Nations more than half for 2017, only the United States could have boasted uh, that it accomplished 162 offenses with uh, unmanned aerial vehicle and cruise missiles. I go to this uh, digital web, Agencia Latinoamericana Prensa Lativa, on April 9th, say military mission is valued in Germany to observe the ceasefire in Yemen. The public uh, channel, German uh, news, ARD, support, uh, showed uh, official documents, according to Prensa Latina, that the document is debating and that could be result in a decision tomorrow. Uh, the German government is uh, assessing to send uh, a contingent of police uh, without weapons to uh, accompany United Nations mission in charge of uh, supervising the Hudeida uh, Convention that is included in the Stockholm Agreement uh, signed uh, by the end of uh, 2018. In the German parliament, there were critiques, and we're going to read one. The federal government has still not taken a decision on suspending the export of weapons to Saudi Arabia, the main responsible of suffering uh, of the Yemeni population. This was uh, mentioned by Alexander Redmeo, who is a spokesman of uh, defense policy. I now go to Newsfront under the title on March 30, 2019, Yemen said that the UK is accomplice in the war crimes of Saudi Arabia and cannot be a peace agent. In an interview published by The Guardian on Friday, March 29, a high uh, official, the president of the Revolutionary Committee uh, uh, of Yemen, Mohammed Ayel Kut, questioned the uh, UK uh, Foreign Affairs Relations Minister for supporting the continuous exports of weapons to Saudi Arabia, saying that London cannot be a peace agent in Yemen while it is arming the invaders. Uh, Al Houthi also uh, asked the creation of an international independent committee and questioned the Secretary of Foreign Affairs of uh, the UK, Jeremy Hunt. I now go to Orden Mundial, an article that was published on January 24, 2019, called Houthi Insurgents in the War of Yemen, written by Arsenio Cuenca, graduated in sociology by uh, the University Pablo de la Vida Sevilla. In his article, he says that looking at the polarization regarding the blocks that are being formed in the Near East, everything uh, leads us to think that Houthis will be valuable allies for Iran. 
like Iran, they have Israel and the United States as doctrinary enemies as well as Saudi Arabia, which they confront directly in war. Both the founder of the movement and his brother that took control of the organization after the death of al Bouti passed uh, the, most of their lives in uh, Demont. And he wonders if we can think that the subsidiary movement of Iran, and Arsenio Cuenca says that the answer is not simple and that this group of interest has to be uh, observed. Iran is not willing to uh, open uh, to the Houthi movement because uh, this could have a completely adverse effect and increase tensions with other members of the region. This is the opinion of Arsenio Cuenca, which uh, we uh, will add and uh, compare with our guests. Let's uh, contact with uh, our correspondent uh, at home that is moving around Africa, once again, from the Democratic Republic of Congo. And he connects to tell us uh, uh, what is happening there. Good morning. The death of tens of scholars in Shana last uh, Sunday is another uh, drop uh, that uh, 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 is uh, stopping patients and uh, prevents war. Uh, the government has attacked the school of Hatshawan, but in the last three years it has uh, performed hundreds of thousands of air attacks on territories controlled by Houthis. The Trump's administration justifies its military support to Saudi coalition in order to prevent the expansion of violent radicalism. But uh, what uh, he has found until now is just uh, uh, increase violence and take uh, Yemeni population to an endless war. Meanwhile, uh, Western governments uh, seek benefits for their weapons industry where they dream in uh, weaving an alliance to control the Strait of Bab al mandab Millions of barrels of oil pass uh, across there every day since the Middle East were, uh, wells to the Red Sea and the Suez Canal. Meanwhile, they are uh, deaf to human valor and the tragedy of war. But something is changing. The resolution of the le le U.S. legislative chambers that demand Trump to order the withdrawal of uh, its military support to the Saudi coalition has the potential of challenging impunity that uh, has existed until now. U.S. President evokes the possibility of vetoing the decision of Congress, but uh, he risks to promote the project of his uh, dismissal. Germany, after its internal political debate, committed to suspend all weapons exports to countries who are better participating in the war of Yemen, and the UK immersed in the Brexit crisis, and France, even France, are confronted to the horrors that uh, its executives promote in Yemen. Even humanitarian organizations that work in humanitarian aid recognize that this is not the solution that uh, a political solution is needed for the Yemeni conflict, a solution that would challenge international actors that have called the world to war again. At the beginning, this would be about investigating alleged war crimes like that of the past Sunday to determine responsibilities and advance in the general prevention of the unfair. We go back to Caracas. Thank you, Oscar Epelde, from the Democratic Republic of Congo. As we see, there are numberless contradictions uh, in this war imposed on Yemen. We will continue analyzing the nature of the conflict and the interest that uh, the actors hold to this state. That is not only reduced to the United States as we are listening. We will continue after this pause.
Medio Público de España reseña al respecto Media Public of Spain regarding our critical moves uh, topic Yemen another long term este war uh, has published this Yemen opinion article under the uh, title of Yemen and the uh, uh, good and bad US uh, with Saudi Arabia the first part uh, the publication is of April 9 what uh, we I mentioned uh, before, the U.S. Congress in an unprecedented resolution passed on April 5 by both uh, parties uh, urged the U.S. Uh, president to support uh, uh, the uh, Saudi Kingdom and Arab uh, United Emirates in its war, genocide war and silence war against Yemen. One month before, by initiative of Bernie Sanders, the Senate passed a similar solution. Even if uh, no one can annul uh, the presidential decision, such actions, we can see that there are several uh, Items. The use of military force uh, uh, in Yemen has been illegal, according to the Constitution, should have been authorized by Congress. The government had not declare, declared the war against Yemen. It was not an, it presented no threat to U.S. security. And uh, this will cause insecurity in the United States. It is about an important uh, public reprimand uh, to the U.S. president. Both resolutions that, as we said, were passed in the first quarter of this year, or including April's second uh, quarter. And before, uh, we were saying that uh, this war in Yemen has many uh, branches, with 85,000 and uh, children died by, from hunger and other lethal weapons. The reason, one of the reasons is the dispute between Saudi Arabia and Iran for the power in the region. The intentions of Saudi uh, uh, aggressions is to impose an Akin government. Yasur Hadi was uh, uh, named, uh, but uh, confronted the Houthis who uh, governed Yemen until 1962, the Saudi accused Houthis to be akin to Iran. According to Saudi Arabia, the Persian uh, government ha is uh, arming the Houthis, especially against uh, Fado Lawud's strong Iranian uh, uh, influence that had the Yemeni resistance and uh, against the puppet uh, government. This unstable there is dangerous for the Riyadh monarchy because of the contagion that could ha happen. This is why uh, Saudi Arabia crushes any kind of rebellion. The dispute for Yemen uh, is also aimed to control the Strait of Al-Mandet uh, in the African. This is a completely strategic uh, place. But Al-Mandet Strait uh, on the uh, uh, Red Sea, on the Indian Sea, uh, uh, it is calculated that more than four million barrels of ore are transported on this zone. Almost 10% of the world's crude and almost 10% of the crude consumed by Europe. It's one of the main sea uh, routes to send a route to a large part of the world. Bombarding the Cape of uh, Buena Esperanza would be uh, terrible because of its strategic importance. The United States has established several military bases, for example, in Djibouti, a small African country with 800 thousand inhabitants. The most important is the U.S. base of Kainamo with more than 4,000 soldiers. France has another one of one million men. Since 2018, Saudi Arabia stopped its exports through al Mandar Strait after two uh, oil ships were attacked by Houthis. Oil is also a reason here. 
with uh, uh, deep uh, geopolitical intention. Let's incorporate uh, the vision of our analyst from Argentina, Professor Angel Molina. He is a political analyst, member of the uh, Center, uh, Cultural uh, Study Center on uh, cu Cultural Diversity. Thank you for being here. I ask you, how do you see things from Yemen? Are we close or far away from the end of this uh, irrational war? Thank you very much, Lucia. We must always put in context the kind of news that the United States issues. In the first place, it's interesting what we are observing. This news has much to do with internal news than what uh, will happen in Yemen, really. The only way to avoid a long-term stay uh, of this conflict is uh, the capacity of the uh, Yemeni people, especially its main actors that uh, in spite of these three years, years and more than 60 southern dead people still control some urban sectors in the uh, section of shaman. Nevertheless, uh, this is interesting to contextualize. The United States do not see, does not see affected uh, the military agreements it had with uh, Saudi Arabia, owner of more than four a trillion dollars. Let's remember that Saudi Arabia in the last months are finishing the construction of a nuclear uh, uh, plant with the support of its allies, United States, in this case also. Sadly, uh, Argentinian uh, support, and nothing tells us that the conflict is about to end. I think uh, that, on the contrary, that uh, because of the spirit, he sees a very strong leverage that uh, enables him to act in the way he is doing. Let's remember that last week, a bombarding uh, headed by Saudi Arabia targeted a school. This is one of uh, uh, the effects that was recorded by the media permanently. We also uh, see in the Trump administration. Looking at the article we were reading in publico.es, uh, written by Nasalin Armanian, the author says, if the United States would have uh, wanted to Saudi Arabia win this war, they would have turned Yemen in uh, ashes in one month, as it did with uh, Iraq and Libya. This is what the author is asking, and I replicate the question to you to learn your opinion in this regard. I think that the United States has changed with regards to some way of intervention in the region. It commits less with its own troops, but it delegates its uh, national allies. Uh, the most terrible actions on the land. We must remember what happened in Syria to see how the United States acts directly or explicitly by compelling its regional actors to act uh, defending their interests. It's very interesting to see how the United States has more than one way of acting in the region that is not only the use of its own troops, but it is not based on a strategic alliance and will now leave uh, Saudi Arabia to assume its personality. And Saudi Arabia is also a dispute, has also a dispute inside. This is something uh, for debate in another time. But in this case, uh, to contextualize uh, the U.S. intervention, we must also say these are interventions with its own truth and how the United States uh, steps back in its own place to allow people to uh, step in the front of the region. The United States has a huge uh, political apparatus, deserts, privatized, uh, and acts privately, so we have a range, uh, a wide range of uh, uh, alternatives, and uh, he always, uh, they always do it uh, with, uh, according to private security. The government has new strategic uh, goals in the region. Therefore, when we think how the United States acts in the Middle East, we must stop including only the troops that the United States assumes in the world 
then start thinking on other factors that also influence the zone and that are privately acting in everything. I ask you also, Professor, regarding the following. If Congress of the United States, the resolutions uh, we would refer, if the German Parliament questions the federal government because uh, it is uh, planning to send uh, 10,000 military and uh, among other facts that have occurred, but a uh, member of parliament says that before evaluating, you must stop exporting arms to Saudi Arabia. So the specific question, we have no doubt where the powerful uh, that uh, uh, the Yemeni people are being depleted. Undoubtedly, this uh, we know for a long time. What are the channels? Let's just review. The uh, arms uh, seizure in the last years have been uh, due to uh, purchases of Saudi Arabia and, and, and uh, it has one million uh, dollars purchased in weapons. It turns it in the main weapons exporter that, of course, come from Europe and the United States. It's interesting the generation of the prohibition of weapons by Germany to its own corporations and the Saudi government. Uh, in one of the joint projects with Germany in the Saudi scenario, it uh, feels committed. It, uh, we mustn't only talk about uh, sexual identity, candles, uh, and this is what uh, a purchaser like Saudi Arabia means in a process of uh, very large uh, military supply. It's a dispute with other great actors in the zone like Turkey, Israel, Iraq, and this aims uh, to destroy a country, the infrastructure, to guarantee that uh, uh, Saudi Arabia not think more than monarchy. Yemen has been a historic problem for Saudi Arabia since the Republic Constitution in 1962 when the last monarchy left. Now, Professor, internally, it also has its internal dilemma, this monarchy, the Saud House, and even very dangerous contradictions for the stability of this democracy. Yes, uh, uh, the uh, Yemeni and Syrian scenarios were two spaces of games and where somehow the legitimacy of the successor was very important because uh, and this uh, 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 has been the head of uh, groups in Yemen, the Saudi uh, government, and they, we have seen the need of these rebel groups in Syria. The Syrian and Yemeni scenarios are very important to understand what could happen with the succession. Nevertheless, we mustn't assume that uh, the pr higher prince uh, uh, will be the only but one. Uh, there will be democratic, others democratic that will no longer be uh, uh, listening to what the United States uh, is. Uh, I have now heard that they are about to, to have another uh, or, and uh, only upon the alliance of international entities uh, provided by the United States since 1945 and after. Germany, France, UK, and its governments are also involved in the bombarding. I think I ask you, uh, is it too much to think of a setback of those forces if uh, the differences are clear in other areas with the government of Donald Trump? I think that uh, as some businesses, uh, multi-billionaire businesses uh, like that of the weapons are embarked,
some things that are seem much less important, but it seems that uh, I uh, constantly support uh, UK K2 uh, United Nations and uh, the French government that uh, talks uh, different in different scenarios. It doesn't uh, seem to speak about uh, human rights in Saudi Arabia. So when it has other uh, interests of uh, matters linked to the purchase of weapons and also neo-colonial practices, the actions of these governments uh, are different. They do not uh, pass through uh, uh, religious. Uh, this is a neo-colonial uh, move that uh, has clear economic interests from weapons to oil and actors that are functional to the governments of Europe and the United States. UNICEF uh, assures that more than 400 children have been wounded, seriously wounded, or have died for the violence that this war has generated since the beginning of 2019. The number only tells us what has happened this year, a war that, uh, uh, as no other, had left a, a very sad uh, balance of children, boys and girls there. Yes, uh, we attended a conflict of uh, cruelty that was uh, reported by uh, any human rights organization. Not only that, but it has been one of the scenarios where there have been a permanent media coverage. And this is uh, what is called the international community. We're not uh, in view of that. There are films of uh, Saudi bombardings and permanent uh, harassment with more than 85% depending on international foreign aid. This is a scenario that we know, we see, there are reports and that are being worked in the international scenarios. And it's a political decision of the main stakeholders of not acting as they did in other scenarios because they both are functional to their policies. It reports somehow, as of Trump administration, there we see a scenario of complete impunity of these actors with an explicit support to uh, their policies, aware that they won't have large sanctions in uh, the Ministry uh, of Foreign Affairs and uh, while other actors are punished and uh, harassed and uh, uh, their human rights are uh, permanently violated by countries like Israel, Saudi Arabia. These are not only protected but many, many times they are awarded by their action. This is a matter of concern. Are we, are we repressed? On the contrary, awarded by the systematic violation of human rights. I would like in this part to... Uh, we were talking about one of the possible scenarios in spite of the uh, poverty and inequality between them. If the Putin's uh, government uh, would win, it would be a government for Putin's and uh, I guess uh, the hypothesis is if Saudi Arabia hegemony is at risk in this part of the world. The Sharulai movement is much broader than only rifles. To think that with the level of blockade that they have uh, on the Yemeni space, there were any possibility of the arrival of Irani uh, weapons is uh, to ignore the technology in the area. Of course, there is an important solidarity uh, of some countries in the world with uh, uh, Yemen and uh, Ashbanga, but this does not mean export of uh, weapons. 
The great danger of Yemen uh, to the Gulf uh, monarchies is a uh, member that has uh, resisted in an aspect of military aspects that have reported the existence and uh, uh, unfairness and systematic violation to human rights in its own country. And the only possibility of the war ending in a relatively short time is that the population linked with, that supports the cellular uh, movement continue. And they uh, act because they have several actors in Saudi Arabia. And this internal weakening commands sometimes uh, we cannot uh, trust the international community because until now it has only been there as an observer of massacres. I would also ask, like to ask about oil that is, has a political weight in this war. You have the Strait of Papal Mandela as a crucial geostrategic uh, place where daily 4 million barrels per day cross. As we said in one of our uh, pieces, and Saudi Arabia is uh, an essential actor of this war as the aggressor with different oil reserves that uh, works as an ally of the United States. It also has interests, right? Undoubtedly, the Strait of Noah Bendel has been uh, coveted for a long time. Remember that uh, uh, you mentioned in your reaper the presence of Djibouti. Djibouti was a French creation just to guarantee the presence of French troops in the control of this strait. On one hand, uh, this uh, strait has had uh, several attempts of uh, uh, controlling the island of Sopoto that would be a prior step. But in the case of military powers settled on the other side of the strait, a special case of Djibouti, it, there's not only France, there's also the United States, and this has also been looked uh, at by China to install its own military bases. Of course, when we're talking about Yemen, we're undoubtedly thinking on this crucial place to the pass of uh, oil shippers when they could do, uh, do it in the Suez Canal. Nevertheless, because of that reason, we understand the uh, outline of some gas ducts and oil ducts of Saudi Arabia that uh, avoid, to avoid depending on those who control the space to make uh, their oil uh, barrels reach west. Thank you very much, Angel Molina from Argentina. It's a pleasure, Lucia. This was our first uh, specialist. We will make a pause, and it's important to continue analyze how the United Nations has acted in this spe specific case without any variant of other conflicts in the world and looking at what determines the coalition of Saudi Arabia, where the United States is in sight. Is the uh, United States the decisive actor of what will happen here and after, we'll make a pause and be back. Yemen, another long-term war, this is our critical move today. On several occasions in these four years of war, uh, the coalition has bombarded several schools and uh, residential uh, neighborhoods and has prevented the interest of aid as uh, Israel does with Pal occupied Palestine. Nevertheless, the United Nations has remained silent. And when these aggressions take place, the media, instead of using words like attacks, prefer to use explosion. We will expand this and connect with our next guest.
A pesar de la mortandad que ha significado la guerra en Yemen desde hace poco más de cuatro años, the, uh, que una parte considerable of the Yemeni de las war, víctimas son niños, where a large part of victims are children and the four million of human beings have displaced, in spite of the evident violation of uh, international laws, United uh, Nations uh, uh, only in 2018 uh, demanded the lift of uh, uh, the withdrawal of Yad. Pero esta, But como en uh, casos, uh, as in many other cases, it was disobeyed. Uh, it has not had uh, a success in any dialogues to unscale the conflict. Ban Ki-moon admitted that when he uh, served as Secretary General, uh, Saudi Arabia, Arabia threatened not to finance any more and kept uh, a list of uh, uh, murderers uh, and its intentions of finishing Yemen. Saudi Arabia was accompanied uh, with, by Egypt with uh, air attacks against uh, Tutis, Jordan, Morocco, Sudan, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar and United Arab Emirates are also there. This army was composed by 40,000 men, and it has, as of the last attack in Sanaa, the president of the Revolutionary Committee of Yemen, Muhammad al Guti, said that everything that is happening is the multimillionary support of the United States and European allies like UK, like the United Nations uh, spokesman, as the parties moderation. Just moderation. This was uh, asked by the UN spokesman in the last attack. I add uh, Eduardo Rosales from Mexico. He is a UNAM investigator. Thank you for being here with us. What uh, does the United Nations do? Is it so incapable of uh, at least stopping the scale, uh, scaling of the conflict? Thank you, Lucia. Greetings to the uh, audience. And I start uh, by saying that the United Nations has stopped operating, especially when in the conflict uh, some of the powers are involved, the permanent members of the Security Council of that organization. In this case, uh, yes, uh, the United States is a uh, uh, and uh, while it is true that uh, behind the rebels, apparently because some do not uh, think so, but uh, behind Houthi chiefs are is Iran. We must also say that behind uh, Yemeni Sunnis is Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates. But besides, these are also supported by the United States. I would like to tell you, Lucia, that uh, uh, the following thing. For the United States, the conflict in Yemen has been truly a round business. And I say this because uh, uh, during the uh, conflict that uh, has almost uh, uh, five years, the United States has sold uh, Saudi Arabia more than $60 billion of weapons, and other countries of the West have also uh, had advantages from the situation, such as the case of Germany, or uh, the case of Spain that has sold more than $2 billion in uh, weapons uh, to Saudi Arabia, and even triangulating and receiving weapons from the United States and reselling to Saudi Arabia. So uh, this situation is sad, where the United States and this co Arab uh, coalition profits or uh, profits from what is happening in Yemen that cannot be called in, uh, in another way but a true tragedy and I would say a humanitarian catastrophe where more than 14 million Yemenis uh, with a population of 28 million half depends on humanitarian aid they receive from abroad so uh, looking at things like this, uh, 
We are also considering that uh, finally Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, supported by the United States, are responsible for thousands of deaths. We're talking only of soldiers, but we're talking about 10,000 deaths. But if we add the civilian population, including women and children, the figure goes to tens of thousands. So uh, it's very sad uh, and very frustrating the uh, position of the United States to the state to the point that uh, the same U.S. Cons Congress, and I'm talking about the House of Representatives, uh, uh, issued a, a, a stop for Donald Trump in this humane, uh, indiscriminate uh, attack that has provided weapons and support to a coalition that is committing a genocide. I ask you, Professor Eduardo, what could uh, uh, break this coalition? There are several uh, matters here. The pressure uh, against Trump in the U.S. Congress has started and will increase. In fact, the House of Representatives issued a resolution on April 4 where it urges uh, the U.S. President to withdraw its troops, but especially support given in terms of uh, supplies and military uh, supply and intelligence to this coalition. Saudi Arabia and uh, Arab Emirates. So uh, the pressure is strong. We must also have clear that the United States, according to its laws, cannot uh, be in a war for more than 60 days without the authorization of Congress. It has been practically five years, and this is uh, precisely what is being questioned. At this time, there is a majority in the House of Representatives, undoubtedly this uh, uh, becomes a pressure. On the other hand, uh, we must recognize that the military conditions of Houthis have uh, uh, approached the uh, negotiation rounds like the one in Sweden in December 2018. Uh, the results are known as the uh, Stockholm Agreements where uh, a ceasefire was agreed, but also an important and interesting matter that was the exchange of prisoners. They uh, uh, achieved the Hobeida agreement, the ceasefire in this very important port. Unfortunately, in many other parts of Yemen, because uh, 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 combats continue, it seems that uh, uh, in Europe there are also groups and uh, of legislative powers pressing uh, upon Germany to stop the situation and Spain as well, this support to the Arab coalition that is committing directly and indirectly uh, humanitarian crimes. Do you think the United States is a decisive actor? If it decides to stop participating in the war, it ends, or it's not so? I think so. I think it's a, an essential actor, and we see that uh, United States, uh, not only the United States is there, but uh, also Israel. Uh, supporting a Zionist government uh, chaired by Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, supporting pillage on Palestinian territories and even on Syrian territories like the uh, Golan Heights. It is present there and also plays an, uh, an essential role by sanctioning Iran and withdrawing from the nuclear agreement and uh, even calling the revolutionary Iranian uh, guard, which is a state entity, something that we've never seen, call it a terrorist group. So uh, United States is the uh, definitive and essential actor in this conflict where far from uh, supporting a peace process, it seems that it's completely the contrary. 
this logic of being in a permanent war where uh, besides several of his companies like uh, Lockheed Martin or Raytheon have been the main beneficiaries of this war because they have sold the largest amount of weapons to the coalition formed by Saudi Arabia and Arab Emirates. So I do think uh, there's a political intention by Donald Trump, but also a search for economic benefits for these corporations and the military industrial complex of the United States that has a presence and a specific weight in the decisions in the, uh, the government of the United States. The scenario is not uh, very positive. Uh, uh, will the uh, Yemeni war be longer than the Syrian case? Unfortunately, I would say yes, it's almost five years. And uh, while it is true that uh, there are signs of attenuating this conflict with the Scott Stockholm agreements, especially with uh, the Hodeida agreement. Yes, uh, uh, this zone has calmed down. And there's even the possibility that some countries like Germany uh, send observers to supervise the ceasefire. But uh, how contradictory, uh, Germany is one of the main suppliers of weapons to Saudi Arabia, and paradoxically, it will send uh, observation mission. In any case, uh, going back to the possibility of peace, we have uh, the situation there. The problem also is in the rest of Yemen, and I think that this will uh, take time. We don't see the possibility of uh, seizing uh, combats in the short term because uh, on the side of inter geopolitical interpretation what uh, we can say that what what the United States and Saudi Arabia and Arab Emirates are seeking is uh, control of the Strait of Bab al Mandat, uh, which is the access to the Red Sea, that is also an access through the Suez Canal to the uh, Mediterranean Sea. On the other hand, it uh, refuses to lose control of that strait uh, since it lost uh, presence in the Ordu Strait. We must also consider this is a very important region in military terms for the United States. For example, in Bahrain, in the heart of the Persian Gulf, uh, uh, the fifth uh, U.S. fleet is settled. Of course, uh, this conflict in uh, Yemen has uh, 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 a religious, uh, allegedly a religious political uh, confrontation of regional powers, but it also has a geopolitical dimension where the United States is uh, one of the main uh, stakeholders by trying to keep uh, a very close control in that zone where uh, oil uh, passes, the oil that comes out from the Persian Gulf and the merchandise is that come to Asia and go to Europe. So uh, there is this other uh, reading, uh, geopolitical reading that uh, uh, it's not quite evident, but uh, we, perfect, we know very well that the United States has interests there. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Rosales. It's a pleasure for me. Investigator of the National Autonomous University of Mexico, Eduardo Rosales. We now go to conclusions. An atrocious conflict, that of Yemen, a multimillionary business of uh, the weapons sale uh, of the United States that has sold uh, more than $60 billion to bomber the Yemeni population. Germany, France, UK are also included together with their uh, weapons corporations that confront to internal questioning. Uh, this uh, uh, income uh, uh, from the war, uh, these aside the wound and the pain that uh, they cause. So this is also a war for oil and the hegemonic control of the region. The United Nations once again appears as an uh, incapable 
capable of uh, uh, enforcing its resolutions, even if uh, international humanitarian crimes have been committed in Yemen. The possibility of peace, finally, the United States is a decisive factor, and the scenario for Yemen is not uh, a positive. This is the end of our critical move. Thank you for your presence.